my favourite Muppets is Rolf the Dog. Like, I love Rolf the Dog, but how did this chilled out pianist Muppet come to be? What's his origins? Where did he start? Well, today we're going to find out as we delve into the bizarre history of Rolf the Dog. Now, Rolf the Dog is older than you might first think. He was actually created back in 1962 when Jim Henson was approached to make a series of commercials for Purina Dog Chow. It's for these commercials that Henson would create two characters, one of them going by the name Baskerville the Hound. Now this was obviously a, a play on words on a Sherlock Holmes story, Hound of the Baskervilles. Baskerville's voice was pretty much identical to Kermit's and that changed very quickly as we got past the commercials. And, uh, and Baskerville stuck around in The Muppet Show in Sesame Street as sort of a background character, as well as sort of a sidekick for Rolf at some points. The second character that Henson created for these commercials was obviously Rolf the Dog. Now, after these commercials had aired, it was rumoured that apparently the company had offered Henson a large sum of money in exchange for the rights to Rolf as a character outright. Henson immediately declined the offer and warned, never sell anything that I own. You know, that's ironic, considering what happened eventually with Henson and Disney. Um, but at this point, he was not selling anything. He was like, no, Rolf is mine. I want him. Before we move on to the rest of sort of Rolf's rise to stardom, I do want to quickly talk about Rolf as a technical puppet, because puppetry really interests me. So let's go over Rolf as a puppet and why he was very unique for his time. Rolf was one of the first Muppets that what's known as a live hand puppet. Now we've spoken about this before, um, briefly if you haven't seen any of my other videos. Basically, two puppeteers are needed to operate a live hand puppet. You've got the main guy who will be doing the voice, in this case, Jim Henson, who will operate Rolf at uh, the head with his left hand, that's my right hand, uh, with his left hand, and then operate the left hand of Rolf. So picture that, he's like, look at me, I'm Ralph the dog, isn't that cool? You've then got a second puppeteer who does literally, whose pure, pure job is to do the other hand. Now, Ralph obviously was famous for playing the piano, and when Ralph would play the piano, Henson would only operate the head, and another puppeteer would do both hands. Just, you know, if you're playing the piano, if you've got one man doing another and one doing the other, it's going to look weird. Whereas you've got one guy doing both hands, you can simultaneously do it and make it look as normal as a dog playing the piano can look. Funnily enough, one of the most regular second-hand puppeteers for Rolf was actually Steve Whitmire, who we know goes on to become Kermit. I'll leave the link up there if you want to see my full video on Steve Whitmire and the Muppets and Disney and all the falling out stuff. But it was Steve Whitmire who would often do that other hand, and when he played the piano, do both. Now, Whitmire actually said in an interview, I want to get this quote right, so excuse me for reading it from my laptop, but, Henson's, uh, but Whitmire said in an interview, one of my favourite things to do ever in my career has been to do Rolf's hands on the piano, which is something that other people have done, but once I started doing it, I kind of have done it since. It's the best job in the world for somebody who sort of plays the piano, but would really like to play the piano well. You can approximate what it's supposed to be and make it look really good. So Steve Whitmire could somewhat play the piano, but the way they did it was they'd have... Um, the piano playing would be recorded and played over the top, and then Whitmire would have to mime along to play on the piano. And the, they had like a prop piano, and basically it made no sound when the keys were pressed down. So it's not like he was sort of hovering over the keys, he was pushing the keys down, but just no music came out. That was all done through speakers pre recorded. So I can see how that would be quite fun for Whitmire to like, it sounds and looks like he's playing the piano, but it, he's not, because you know, he, it's very difficult to play with four fingers, I'm guessing was also the first Muppet who didn't have an abstract design. Like, you look at Gonzo, like, what's that? What is Gonzo? We don't know. But he wasn't like some weird alien. It wasn't Gonzo. It wasn't whatever Bunsen is. It wasn't... It was just a dog. Obviously, because he was creating, created for dog food commercials. He was just a dog. Rolf the dog. Rolf's first TV appearance was on a show called The Jimmy Dean Show, which surprisingly was hosted by the country singer Jimmy Dean. Now, it ran from 1963 to 1966, and for context, that means that this show 
ended 10 years before The Muppet Show had first aired on TV. So Rolf was going from early on. Rolf is an old, old Muppet. His role in the show was sort of comic relief, but also a duet partner for Jimmy Dean to sing duets with. Now this role really challenged Henson as a performer and a puppeteer, because this was one of the first times he'd had to interact with a live performer, actual human being. It meant that Henson had to sing, and Henson wasn't not musical, but he, he wasn't a singer per se, and it's really weird to think now that him singing was such a strange anomaly at the time, because Muppets and like musical number dance breaks are so like synonymous now, so the thought of that being a push for Henson is quite strange. When he was on the show, Rolf would still be out filming commercials, which, you know, is very rooted for Rolf. That's, a, that's where he started, so it makes sense for him to keep doing it. As well as doing, like, a series of live shows following the end of the Jimmy Dean show. So he was... Rolf was really, like, quite a famous big name of that time. Henson eventually created The Muppet Show in 1976. He brought Rolf along with him, and this time he was now the resident pianist of The Muppets. Then be seen sort of playing classical music and joining in with duets, little songs here and there, usually with uh, Baskerville the Hound, who we mentioned earlier on uh, when he was doing the, the dog food commercials. He's back now, and sometimes they do little duets, which is quite nice. Even though Rolf is one of the many Muppet musicians, he's not actually part of the band Electric Mayhem, which is quite a common thing where people are like, oh, he must be a member. He's not actually a member of the band, and he's only actually, like, played with them specifically, like, as a group three times. Um, it was in, let me get this right, in episode 424 and 513 of The Muppet Show, and also in Muppet's Christmas Carol at one of the parties. I can't remember the character's name. It's at one of the parties. The Muppet movie in 1979 actually saw something very strange and sort of a first at the time. So in a scene from the film where Kermit and Rolf first meet in the terrace restaurant, Kermit is feeling down and Rolf shares his motto on life with Kermit and they then proceed to sing a duet of I hope that something better comes along. I hope that something better, I hope that something better, I hope that something better comes along. may not seem too strange at first, like what, two Muppets are singing a song together in a musical? Sure, of course they are, that's, that's, that's what they do. Both Kermit and Rolf are voiced by Henson. So, Henson was singing a duet with himself. And this was obviously done by recording the two parts separately and just combining them. But at the time that was very, like, that was, that was not done in Muppets, let alone sort of anywhere else. What's very interesting about Ralph's history, just before we move on, is that due to the simple design of Ralph being head and hands, the actual puppet has undergone no changes. Like, I know uh, Miss Piggy's one, we talked a lot about how she changed the look, same with Kermit. Ralph, none of that. He hasn't changed as a puppet. Through the early 80s, Rolf remains quite a small character through films such as The Great Muppet Caper and Muppets Take Manhattan. He also appeared in Muppet Babies as, you probably guessed it, the, the nursery pianist toddler child dog. Sure, why not? In this period, he'd also appear in sort of TV spots and specials through the late 80s and also back to his roots of TV commercials yet again and sort of other promotional material for sporting events and such. So, Rolf was used more outside of the Muppets to promote other things than he was in the Muppets at this time, which is really strange to think of now. Now we've got a new segment for this show, if you want to call it that, called Muppet Facts with Fraser. Well, basically, I'm going to give you three or four quick-fire Muppet facts about whatever we're talking about. Because Rolf was a nationally famous character, and probably the first famous Muppet, Rolf was actually made into toys. In 1966, Ideal Toys produced a hand puppet Rolf. Look at him, where you put your hand through the back and blow, look at me, I'm Rolf the dog. Kinda want one, but quite expensive, but I do kinda wanna get one. I think some discrepancy as to how Rolf's name is actually pronounced. Most people will pronounce it as Rolf. On his show, Jimmy Dean pronounced it as Ralph, but then Jane Henson and Frank Oz have pronounced it as Ralph as well. Brian Jones, who wrote a biography on Henson, said that Henson derived the name from Ralph. So, 
But then the correct pronunciation from Rolf's own lips, so if Rolf says it, or anyone in the Muppets says it, it's closer to Rolf. But, you know, who, this is all over the place. But then, Rolf pronounces his own name as it's spelt with an owl sound, so it ends up sounding more like Ralph, or Rolf, but like Ralph. So it's not Ralph, it's not Rolf, it's Ralph. That's hard. Rolf. I say Rolf. Make, uh, who cares, to be honest. It's Rolf, Ralph, Ruth, who... Paul <laughs> Beretta, who is the new voice for Rolf, confirmed in Comic-Con 2015 that the current Ralph puppet has been used since around 1985, and thus at one point it was actually handled by Jim Henson himself. That's why he's gone undergone so little changes. It's the same one from the sort of 80s. Like, how cool's that? Enjoyed Muppet Fats with Fraser. Join me next time. I was going to say week. Not next week. Join me next time when we have more Muppet Facts with me, Fraser. Cheers. After Henson's death in 1990, Rolf continued to appear in Muppet Projects, but only silently and briefly. So Rolf did not say a word. And I think they, they said that was out of respect for Henson, which fair enough, that makes sense. Henson voiced Rolf. Rolf's got a very unique voice. But even in one of the most famous Muppet films, The Muppet Christmas Carol, Rolf doesn't say a word. Eventually, in around 1991 or 1992, Bill Beretta takes over the role as Rolf, along with a host of other Muppets that Henson originally voiced. Uh, Dr. Teeth, Pepe the King Prawn, and Swedish Chef, to name sort of the, the biggest, most famous ones. And despite Rolf having a brand new performer, he still didn't speak much. Then he'd just make remarks here and there with sort of little... Oh, nice. Yeah. Huh. <laughs> Classic. He did begin to speak more as he had a 190 word monologue in a 2005 episode of Statler and Wardolf from the Balcony, uh, which was like an internet show looking at movie trailers and just talking about movie news from the week presented by Statler and Wardolf, which I, hadn't, I didn't know about that before uh, researching this video. That's really cool. I'm going to have to have a look into that and maybe we'll do a video on it. It wasn't actually until 2011 when we got the Muppet reboot that Rolf had a significant role. Now in the new Muppet films, Rolf can be seen with sort of the frontline Muppets. I'm talking Kermit, Piggy, Gonzo, Fozzie, Swedish Chef, that lot. He's sort of in that group now. And he even appeared in some musical numbers. In the first film, he was in Smells Like Teen Spirit with... Oh, God, here we go. Um, Sam... Sam Eagle, Beaker, and... Oh, that pig. What the, what the bloody... Link? I think the pig's called Link. Link Hog... Hogthrob? Link. Rolf was also quite a key role in the greatest film of all time, Muppets Most Wanted. There you go. It took us, it took us till the last segment, but we got there. It's again a foreground Muppet. However, many of his contributions to Muppets Most Wanted were actually cut from the original film, which I'm not having that. Um, they are still available to listen to in the soundtrack, but the fact they were cut from the original film, not happy, and I can't find the extended. If you, if you know where I can find the extended cut of Muppets Most Wanted, tell me. Maybe Blu-ray. Uh, who watches Blu-rays, though? Let me know, because I kind of do want one. So, there you have it. That was the bizarre history of Rolf the dog. If you did enjoy this video and want to see more Muppety goodness from me, please do click here and watch uh, the bizarre history of Steve Whitmire versus Disney. Uh, personally, I think that's one of, my, the, like, one of the best Muppet videos I've done on my channel. I really enjoyed looking into that and making it. Um, and with that being said, please do subscribe, like the video, all that fun stuff, and I will see you in the next one. Toodle pip. Also, let me know what Muppet am I delving into next. Why do we always come here? I guess we'll never know. It's like a kind of torture to have to watch the show. Dun, dun.